The following question reads that uh, in this question, X represents an atom of chlorine, bromine or iodine. So you have uh, three molecules, uh, chlorine which is Cl2, then you have uh, bromine, it's also diatomic, it's Br2 and you have iodine which is I2. Now uh, the question states which explanation for the variation in volatility down group 17 or group 7 is correct. So we're going to discuss the volatility of chlorine, bromine and iodine. If you uh, know the states at room temperature, you will notice that chlorine at room temperature is a gas. So it's in gaseous state. Bromine is in liquid state at room temperature. Whereas iodine is solid. It's in solid state. So the volatility of the substance or the, or the tendency for the uh, substance to evaporate easily it decreases. Chlorine evaporates very easily. It's already in gaseous state. Bromine evaporates quickly as well. Uh, iodine is a solid. It evaporates. It needs a lot of energy. So, so the volatility decreases down the group, which means that the melting and boiling point increases down the group. Chlorine boils very easily. Bromine uh, needs some energy. Iodine is a solid. It needs even more energy. So, so melting and boiling points are actually increasing down the group, which means that the attractive forces in iodine are the greatest. And in chlorine, the attractive forces are the weakest. And if you look at the molecules of chlorine, Cl2, you would notice that it's a, it's a completely non-polar molecule because both chlorine are, chlorines are equally electronegative. So the shared electrons are evenly distribu distributed between the atoms. Similarly, bromine also has no dipoles. The electrons are evenly distributed. Both bromines are equally electronegative. And the same is true for iodine. So there are no permanent dipoles present. There is no partial positive, partial negative side for this molecule. The electrons are evenly distributed. So the only force of attraction uh, that would exist between two chlorine molecules uh, they, or two bromine molecules or two iodine molecules, it's going to be Van der Waals forces. Now the reason why Van der Waals forces would exist between two chlorine molecules, for example, there's one Cl2 molecule over here and another Cl2 molecule over here is because these electrons over here, although they are evenly distributed, but these molecules, chlorine molecules, are randomly colliding with each other. If they are randomly colliding with each other, the electrons, the, the shared electrons in between, in the middle, they would, uh, they would temporary, for a very temporary instant, might fluctuate. They might uh, get knocked to one side during collisions. If they get knocked to one side, one side might get a slight negative charge for a very temporary instant, and the other side might get a slight positive, si positive charge. And... This temporary dipole would be created and this temporary dipole would induce a dipole. The positive side of this molecule over here is going to attract the shared electrons of the neighboring molecule. So these electrons over here would become closer to this chlorine because they would be attracted by this positive charge over here. So this side would get a slight or partial negative charge and the other side would get a partial positive charge. And there's going to be a force of attraction uh, created when the positive side of one molecule would be attracted to the negative side of the other molecule. So this is what Van der Waals forces is. That during random collisions, the electrons get knocked to one side or the other side and temporary dipoles would be produced. And these temporary dipoles would induce dipoles on other molecules because they would start attracting electrons from other molecules and dipoles would be induced on the other molecule as well. And there's going to be a force of attraction between one molecule and the other molecule. The positive oppositely charged uh, sides, they would be attracting each other. And the exact same thing would be true for bromine molecules. Two bromine molecules, although they are non-polar, but during collisions, bromine's electrons would get knocked to either side. So there would be some fluctuating dipoles, temporary or instantaneous dipoles created. This bromine might get a positive, slight positive charge, and the other bromine might get a slight negative charge, and an induced dipole would be created on the neighboring molecule, and the two molecules would start attracting each other. And the same would be true for iodine molecules. The electrons might fluctuate, they might get knocked to one side and positive and negative charges would, would be created. So these are Van der Waals forces. So all three molecules, they're going to have Van der Waals forces because they don't have permanent dipoles. The only dipoles they're going to have are going to be temporary dipoles. For a very temporary or uh, instant, uh, there would be some electrons getting knocked to one side and positive and negative charges would be created. Now, as you move down the group, 
Uh, the boiling boiling points and melting point increase. Irene is a solid, which means that the Van der Waals forces or the temporary dipole induced dipole interaction is becoming stronger. And the reason why, as you move down the group, the strength of Van der Waals forces increases is because the molecule size increases. Iodine has almost uh, 100 electrons in its molecule. So if 100 electrons partially get knocked to one side, the partial negative and the partial positive charges that would be created because the total number of electrons in an iodine molecule are, are great. So if 100 electrons get knocked to either side, then uh, the partial negative and partial positive charges that would be created or the temporary dipoles created would be very large and the force of attraction between two iodine molecules would be stronger. In chlorine, a chlorine molecule only has a total of 34 electrons. 17 electrons from one chlorine, 17 from the other. So if 34 electrons get knocked to either side, the temporary dipole cre dipoles created would be, would be smaller in size. The partial negative and partial positive charges would be stronger in size. So the reason why Van der Waals forces increases down the group is that bigger molecules have more electrons and more electrons if they get knocked to either side, the temporary dipole induced dipole interaction is going to be much greater. So remember bigger molecules have stronger Van der Waals forces. So the answer to the variation in volatility is going to be option A that instantaneous dipole induced dipole forces which is, the, which is another term used for Van der Waals forces between molecules they would become stronger as you move down the group so this statement is going to be correct so the correct answer is going to be it's going to be option a i will also comment on the other options for example option b is talking about permanent dipole permanent dipole forces remember there are no permanent dipoles both the uh, uh, this is a non-polar molecule and the electrons are evenly distributed so there are no permanent dipoles only temporary or instantaneous dipoles are produced. Option C is that the bond energy of the X2 molecule increases. Remember, uh, volatility or melting or boiling points does not, it does not matter whether the bond is strong or weak. Uh, the melting and boiling points depend how, with the, how much force is one molecule attracting another molecule. So it depends on the intermolecular forces between the molecules, not the bonds. So uh, the bond energy is irrelevant over here. And the ionization energy similarly is also completely irrelevant. Uh, the volatility only depends on the attractive forces between molecules, how one molecule attracts the other molecule.